everyone, this is Angela Clark with Threadwiggle Quilting and APQS Raleigh. Today I want to use the 2021 design that we talked about yesterday and set it up as a border. I'm going to start out by changing my border style to none. And this will let me just basically create a straight line across my border. Um, I also want to lock my verticals in and lock my borders. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm simulating. I'm not on a long arm. Um, and typically if I was creating something like this, I would be doing it on my laptop or on my desktop and not directly on my surface. Um, so I would measure how wide my quilt is and I would set my quilt up that way. Um, so it, it just makes more sense to me because I'm going to be doing multiple steps to set my panel up in the end. So the last thing I need to do is tap where the corners are showing on the screen and set the two outside corners. Um, and I only have to set the outside corners because I've locked my verticals and locked my border width. So it is setting the other six buttons on my screen. You only want to do this when you're simulating. If you are on a real quilt, you want to mark all eight buttons. Okay. So, um, like I said, just doing this because I'm simulating and I will be using this design later, right? When I actually quilt the quilt. Um, but I will set, make sure I'm setting the points I need to when I actually quilt the design. We are not going to need to do anything with margins in this because we don't want our design floating on our space. We want it to take the full space. And then the next thing we want to do is go to get patterns. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to suggest you play with your patterns a little bit. And I'm going to tell you that I cheated a little bit yesterday because I told you to move your start point on your 2021. Let me show you why I, I told you to do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and go into the borders and I'm going to choose uh, the Jessica Schick's Seabird um, edge to edge. Um, all of the designs that I'm showing you are ones that came with Quilt Path 4 for, for um, APQS owners. Um, so it's all designs you have that you can play with. And that's one of the reasons I'm using them is you should all of my APQS owners should actually have them to play with, but you can play with any design that's inside your quilt path. Um, and the same things that I'm talking about are going to be true no matter what the design is. Okay. So I'm going to start out by choosing Seabird and it's going to go completely across. It used autofill. The design looks great in the space, right? Um, so it, it looks like I would expect it to look. Now I want to put that 2021 right in the center. So I'm going to choose my center design and I've saved one that doesn't have the start point moved. And then I saved the one that I did yesterday that has the start point moved. So let's go into the one that I didn't move the start point on first. And this is why I had you move the start point. It's just a little bit easier. It's going to give you a little more success from the beginning. Um, so what Quilt Path is trying to do is take your piano across and the start and end point is on the right bottom side of this number two. So it is joining the end point of the panograph to the start point of your 2022. And then it's just trying to guess which start or end point after that you want it to join up with. So it doesn't look real great, right? Um, so you can fix this. All you have to do is go down to number five, edit patterns and under border to center where it's joining those two designs together. You're going to take the check where it says by ends. You want that up on by widths. So by tap on by widths, you're going to notice that it looks a lot better. Now you only get autofill if you are using by ends. So if I reduce the number of patterns, it's going to look a lot better um, than it does when it first comes in because it's trying to use the eight patterns it has and smush them into half of the quilt. Okay. Um, just some things to understand when you start out. Um, and let me show you what it would look like with the other, the other design real quick. So we're going to jump back up to get patterns real quick and I'm going to clear off the design that we just chose. And then I'm going to go back in and add the one that we created yesterday. Okay. 
you're going to notice that I can use autofill now and it does look correct still. Um, it actually has the same number of patterns that I had, had reduced it to. Um, if I go to edit patterns, you're going to notice there's not even a buy-ins choice anymore. It knows it can correct connect those designs all the way across. So like I said, I was kind of cheating a little bit yesterday because I understood how the program was going to work when we got into the border feature and I wanted you to have success. But I also want to explain why I did it, right? And why it was worth moving that start point. Okay. So I like this design um, and I'd be fine with it because I'm looking at quilting a quilt all over and just having 2021 quilted in it in spaces. My issue with this um, is going to be that it nests and when I enlarge the row to nest for this part up here, right, to nest up into here to look correct, my 2021 is going to be quilting over other things. So it's not really going to be that easy for me to do this one. Um, so I'm going to look at a different design. I'm going to find something that is going to quilt a little easier for me, right? Um, I'm going to go back up to get patterns. And we're going to look at a couple different designs and see, um, just see how they look so that we get ideas on how to do things. So this is AC bubbly and it is another design that you could definitely use and put the same design up and, you know, above and below it. Uh, I am going to show you that on this one, I would actually want the one with the start point in the weird position. And the reason is it wants to quilt over itself just a little bit, and that would bug me. So I would be switching to the other design in this case so that I could get it to uh, go by width again for me a little bit better. Um, it's just, you know, six of one, half dozen of another. Um, which one's going to be easier at that moment. So maybe save both of them so you can go back and forth when you're creating the 2021. Another option that I looked at for my border design was the AC Continuous Orange Peel Border um, that is part of Quilt Path. And I like the way this one looks. The problem is going to be getting a design to match up exactly. So in this case, if I was going to be using this particular border um, or this particular design, I would be um, using something different on the top and the bottom, which could happen. So let me show you why I am saying that. If I go up to the toolbox and I go to stats, you're gonna notice that this border pattern feature is roughly for by eight, okay, or 4.86 inches wide. Um, if I then remove my border feet, my center and go back up there, we're looking for 4.86 and you're gonna notice that this is 5.147. So they are not going to match up correctly. And even if I come and I add a border, which would make my design smaller in width, you're going to notice that the border is 4.80 and not 4.86. So it's just not going to line up row to row the way that I want it to. Um, that being said, the design looks awesome when I put it um, in there. I'm going to hit autofill again so that it looks the way I want it to look. Um, and I might be willing to do a different panel above and below this and have this be more of a star row, right? More of a focus. So let's look and see how I would use this because I want to save it so that I can put it into my Panto in a moment. So I am going to say, so all. And then once it is in this, this screen where it would be sewing if I was on my computer, right? I'm going to save it here and I'm just going to do 20, 21, Panto, option one and hit enter and save. Okay, so that gives me one option we can play with to, as we get to set up panos. The next thing I wanna look at is, I wanna look and see how this would look with like a curvy crosshatch idea. So I'm gonna go back into my border and I'm gonna do wavy crosshatch 
and say open and I want and look and see what it would look like there. I do kind of like the way that this one looks. So I want to do the same thing where I go up to my stats window and look and see what my stats are. So it's 1.444. Okay, so if I remove my 2021 and I go back up to my stats window, I'm at 1.441. I want to see if I can get these two to work together. So I am going to go ahead and do the same thing I did earlier and hit sew all on this option. And I'm going to save it. I'm go to the disk and hit save and do uh, 2021 Panto option. And I'm going to call it 2B, right? Because I'm going to need two things saved to see if I can get these to work together. Um, I'm also going to need to save the one that has the 2021 in the center. So I'm going to hit open my center back up and then do so all again and save this as well. And I'm going to name this one um, 2021 Panto Option 2, right? So then I know that I have two of them to work together. Um, and then I would want to keep playing to see what options I want. Um, so let's look at one that's just in quilt path. So I'm going to go to my continuous line folder um, and let's look and see what it would look like if we use curly Q. Okay, so it's got curls all the way across. Honestly, um, not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and say let's save this one as well. So I'm going to do so all. I'm also going to save this one and I'm just going to name it option three. So I'm going to hit save. Um, and I'm just tapping on one of them. So all I have to do is change the three real quick. Okay. So that gives me three that I can play with to set up a pantograph. And, but it also shows you how you can use the center of something you know, to change how a border looks. And then I give you one more idea here too. Let's say I had something in the mid middle of this quilt and I knew the measurement that I needed my pano to be. I could set up a square that is the size that I wanted it to be and save it in Panograph. Or I could set up a square the size I want it to be and save it um, and then bring that in as my center design. And then I can do sew portion and tell it I only want you to sew the left and the right and say so and it's going to be blank in the center so if you're trying to avoid something you can get the program to help you with that so i'm going to do this and hit save and this is going to just be um i'm going to name it test okay and i'm going to show you what i mean tomorrow um when i'm doing the pano and i'm setting up the 2021 um I will also show you this one and show you that I can set up a pano that has a void in it. Um, I can only set the void up in the center or I can use the center option to set the void up. I'll put it that way. Um, but that doesn't mean that I can't move this to the right and to the left on my screen. So just know that there are some other ways that we can creatively get around avoiding things. Um, and we will talk about that more tomorrow. I really hope you're enjoying the videos. Um, once again, my name is Angela and I'm with Threadwego Quilting and APQS Raleigh. Um, we are APQS Raleigh on Facebook, Threadwego on Instagram and on YouTube. And I really love being able to show you Quilt Path. Um, please leave comments for me so that I know you're listening to the, um, videos and, I look forward to our third video in this series, which I am hoping to um, have completely done by the end of the year.